When you first just look out, it looks like you're on the moon. The sea ice is just these huge white expanses that are cracking and moving. It's never the same. It blows my mind that a bear adapted to live on this landscape and thrive in this landscape. You know, I don't like to be cold, <laughs> but I've learned how to dress for it and stay pretty comfortable. You got to keep looking up and down the beach because it's highly likely a bear could walk up on us. This area has always had just annual ice, which means that the ice has uh, melted entirely every summer. Even if the bay wasn't frozen by this time, we often would see more ice than this. We look out into the bay and there's no ice to see anywhere. And that means that the polar bears have to fast for a longer period because there's really nothing for them to eat on land. really great questions. So Steve, why can't we just go around spreading out some sort of feeding stations for these bears while they're waiting for food? Years ago, I did a little calculation of how much it would cost to feed these bears on the shore of western Hudson Bay, and it was over a million dollars a month to get up here. This is I'm one of the few people that I know who ended up doing in life what I wanted to do since I was a little kid. I just always wanted to do wildlife research, and I was always especially enamored of bears. I've been working on polar bears nearly 40 years, and I've helped to get polar bears listed as a threatened species under the U.S. Endangered Species Act. Dr. Amstrup, could you tell us, in your opinion, how endangered is the a polar bear. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, our research completed this past summer suggested that uh, within the next uh, 50 years or so, that uh, the population of polar bears could decline by approximately two thirds because of changes in the sea ice habitat that are related to uh, uh, global warming. In May of uh, 2008, polar bears were listed as a threatened species, and that was. That was the single biggest accomplishment in my career. More than 15,000 scientists are sounding the pace an alarm. Of sea ice decline and surface ocean warming is 95 percent of the oldest Arctic ice has Experts melted. Experts are telling us that the ice is reaching one of its lowest minimums in decades. Polar bears are worse off than habitats are melting under Sources their are disappearing. It's shocking. And it's a whole ecosystem that is threatened. Unfortunately. The rest of the story is here we are 10 years later and we really haven't done anything to save polar bears. We need to dramatically reduce carbon emissions. We're running out of time.
Churchill is the farthest north that you can get in Manitoba. On the coast of the Hudson Bay, polar bear capital, blue capital, and northern lights capital of the world. Which is very cool, we got three capitals. I moved in with my grandma when I was 10. My grandparents have been here for a very long time. You have your family here and you have your past here and you have like your heritage here, you know? I work three jobs and then I work two jobs around the school year. People don't see how hard it actually is to live here. Climate change is real, but like so many people are so skeptical about it and everyone's very old school here. So I don't think they believe anything that would come new. The biggest change is the ice and how it doesn't come in at the right time, it doesn't break apart at the right time. I was never really scared of polar bears because it seemed like such a common thing that people had to deal with here. Me and my friend were walking up the street right after volleyball. And at the end of the street, a mother and a cub ran by. And then we turned around, we just started running, which is not the thing you're supposed to do. You're supposed to like drop stuff and like be careful and like walk back slowly. I think that Churchill kind of depends on polar bears because if we didn't have tourists, we wouldn't really have much of a town. As the sea ice is declining, the bears are spending more time on land where they don't have anything to eat. So bears come into villages, bears come into communities, and there can be an attack or a scary event. One of the things that we really can do to help polar bears is try and minimize those interactions, developing early detection systems, developing ways of chasing the bears away before they get into a situation where either a human is injured or a bear has to be shot. This is compact surveillance radar, a system that we're testing as an early warning detection system for polar bears. In the last couple of hours, we have something like 10 or so different targets that this system has picked up. And so our hopes is that a system like this could be used in the communities in the north to help detect polar bears before they get into trouble. I guess my biggest fear would be that as a scientist, I didn't do enough. I was standing on the sea ice, watching these big white bears with their tiny little cubs navigate this barren looking, freezing cold environment. And the respect it gives you for this animal is just, I don't know if I have words for it. It was just this like deep admiration. From basically day one of us hiring any high school students, Journey's been involved in some capacity. She's just been, you know, the hardest worker. She's been our rock. Is that polar bear alert right there? Yes, it is. Before I started working with Polar Bears International, I took a job in Alaska to take over the polar bear research program. It was dedicated research trying to understand everything we could about polar bears. Movements, distribution, denning, population dynamics. The scientific community had been talking about global warming and the climate changes that it was causing for quite a long time. All over the world, habitat was gradually declining. Suddenly, it was more and more difficult to get out on the ice in the fall. 
the bear population was not looking good. They make their living by feeding on seals that they catch from the surface of the sea ice. So the survival of cubs wasn't as good. The animals didn't seem to be as big, as vigorous. And that's been the trend that we've been on ever since. This is, this is a really difficult video to watch. It shows a starving mother polar bear with two cubs, and it shows one of those cubs going into convulsions right before it actually dies in front of the camera. When scientists say that survival rates of polar bears are declining, which we have recorded here in the Western Hudson Bay population and in Alaska, what we really mean is more polar bears are starving to death Perhaps the most important thing to do at this time is to make sure that we communicate science that I've personally learned, the science that others have learned, and inspire people to change things that they buy, change the way they eat, and most importantly, change the way they vote. Yeah, now we can see today. I want to make an impression, I want to excite young men and women, and maybe it's not directly polar bear related, but maybe they're inspired enough to go make these daily choices that are going to add up huge over their lifetime to just make the future cleaner and better. Global warming turns our normal conservation model on its head. We used to always think that, well, we'll collect some information, we'll figure out what we need to do to protect this population. We can build a fence, we can hire some game wardens, we can tighten up the hunting regulations, but we can't build a fence to protect the sea ice from rising temperatures. So today's challenges require a whole cast of other things that we need to do. Do we know how many uh, classrooms are logging into this? Looks like a few thousand are tuning in, at least, yeah, plus the viewers. Wow. Yeah. We have taken the best available science, digested all of the observations that we've made and that many of our colleagues have made over the years, and turned it into messaging for all age groups across society. So the biggest threat to polar bears is the loss of their home, their habitat, the sea ice. When I run our education program. I get to talk to kids all over the world about polar bears, help them get motivated to do something for polar bears no matter where they live. This job is probably the most interesting thing that happened here. Like at the Northern, I'd just be stocking shelves right now. Here, I've done so many incredible things. I don't know, it just broadens my horizons.
she dashed in and grabbed the remains of her cub and started dragging it down the beach. We can imagine that it's some kind of a maternal attachment to her offspring. Having spent most of my adult life studying polar bears, I am personally quite tied to an outcome here. I don't want to see polar bears disappear. The only way to prevent that is to stabilize the climate. And the only way to stabilize the climate is to halt atmospheric greenhouse gas rise. We can think of these bears as messengers. It's a tragic message, but these kinds of events unfolding in the Arctic tell us what kinds of events are to come to all of us. We could expect really major changes in the ecosystem here that are way beyond just the loss of polar bears. If we act within the next 10 to 12 years, we'll halt a lot of those other changes. We can save a world that's still pretty similar to the one that we've all known. If we let it go much beyond that, it's gonna be a very different world. If we get our planet back on track, we can keep sea ice around and we will keep polar bears. That is a motivator. Well, that's for the whole Arctic ecosystem. That's for all the animals around the globe. I think the saving the bears equals saving the people because you're saving communities. Mostly I feel motivated, and that's thanks to the kids that are so on board, the adults that are making changes, the leaders that are starting to step up, and the people like Steve that are just these really powerful voices for positive change in the direction that all of humanity should be going in. What I'm hoping now is that we'll soon move the world beyond a point of hope to the courage that people are going to need to actually go out and do it. People are not just observers of ecology, we're participants in it. Every time you step out the door of your house, you have some influence and you have some ability to influence the world. Thank you.